much. How are you? Well, thank you. Just a reminder, check cell phones. Make sure they're on silent. And when you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. And we'll get things started as soon as Coach is settled. If he doesn't mind opening remarks. And then we'll go to questions from the floor. Coach, welcome to Louisville. Thank you. Uh, we've got a big challenge ahead of us. Um, we don't get an opportunity to watch Virginia much during the season because of the time difference. But uh, last couple days watching them on film, uh, very impressive team, well coached, uh, know what they want to do on every possession. So be a big challenge for our basketball team, but our guys uh, are excited about the opportunity, excited about the challenge. and. Uh, we're going to have to play awfully well to, to give ourselves an opportunity. Thanks, Coach. Let's open it up to the floor. Question here on the right side, center aisle. Yeah, Doug Dowdy from the Roanoke Times in Virginia. It seemed that you, uh, you had a series there with Virginia about 10 years ago. Uh, how did that get started? Uh, I took the job. Uh, at uh, Oregon, um, and you know we needed games, and uh, so uh, we called uh, Virginia, and uh, we went out there first. It was my first year, so it was nine years ago, uh, and then the second year they came back to our place. But uh, uh, we were needing a game, and Tony was needing a game, so uh, we just went home and home, and we started the series out there, and. And then uh, got beat at home also. Okay. Second row here on my left side, Dana. Yeah. And then we'll go to the right side here. Second. Uh, Dana, obviously there's a lot of words and rumors being passed around about your program right now with the Michael Avenatti stuff this week. Do you have anything that you can say to what's been said or implicated or rumored? No, I, I don't have any information on that. Uh, Bull's been with us this year, but uh, I don't have any information. Uh, on that. Okay, go to the right side here, center aisle. Ron Couch, the Daily Progress in Charlottesville. Coach, you guys lost Bowl Bowl, I think ninth game of this season, but still since then, you guys have been one of the most efficient defenses in the country. How did you guys adjust your defense after losing your 7-2 center, and what's been the key to your defense being so successful? Well, we've, we've kind of been up and down all year uh, with the injuries. Um, Lou didn't play the first nine games, uh, nine or ten games, because he was recovering from knee surgery. And then Bowl um, hurt his foot. And, and then Kenny broke his jaw and was out for a month. And uh, when we got him back, uh, Paul uh, White uh, twisted his ankle, and he was ineffective for a while. So we, and I know it's an excuse, everybody has injuries, but we, we've kind of been up and down with injuries. Uh, and Bolt would have been a, a real productive member of our defense. You know, his shot blocking ability uh, uh, would have really helped us. He and Kenny together would have, would have really given us a one-two punch there to protect the rim. Uh, but, you know, the guys have stepped up. Our communication's been a lot better here lately. Uh, guys have taken a lot more pride in, in doing a good job with the scouting report and, and with their defense. So, um, you know, hopefully we can keep that up. This is the most efficient offense, though, we faced. You know, their efficiency numbers are, are off the chart. They don't turn the ball over. Uh, they get the shot they want on most possessions. So uh, it'd be a big challenge for us defensively because, you know, just how well uh, they handle the ball and how well they they know what they want on each possession and, and look for it. Let's go to the left end here, second row, and then we'll go in the right back. Um, Gary Graves, Associated Press. Along that line, we talked about offensive efficiency. This team, these last 10 games, seems to have really flipped the switch in, in terms of not just scoring points, but but really locking down. Um, you know, how, with everything that's happened, how did how do you uh, attribute that, that turnaround so quick? Well, I, th I think two things. Communication, first of all, guys are really doing a better job there. And then, you know, we are healthy now. We, we've got everybody and, and the guys uh, have really gelled together. Uh, you know, the nine guys that we're playing now, uh, you know, really feel comfortable, I think, with their roles. and. Uh, you know, they're, they're really playing unselfishly now uh, on the offensive end and on the defensive end. So, you know, we, we are playing our best basketball. Uh, 
Whether it'll be good enough tomorrow night, I'm not sure, but uh, we are playing a lot better than we were, you know, a month, six weeks ago. Let's go to my right in the back row. Uh, Dana Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Are you concerned at all with Michael Avenatti's allegations regarding Bull Bull, and what's the nature of Bull's relationship with Mel McDonald? You know, I don't have any information on, uh, you know, the things that are going on. And, uh, you know, as far as Mel's relationship with Bull, you know, I know they know each other. Uh, how, what the relationship is, I'm not quite sure, but they definitely know each other. Next question for Coach. Left side, center aisle here. Yeah, Kip Coon, South Boston News and Record, and uh, Press Box View. Uh, Dana, having seen Tony's pack line defense, even though it was years ago, uh, does that help in your preparation for the way they play it now? You know, I, I think, you know, it's not the same defense that that he's run, I think they get out a little bit more than, than what they previously have. Um, you know, uh, they're really, you know, pressuring the ball a little bit more with Clark. Um, you know, he's picking up a little bit more full court than that. So, you know, I think it's a little different. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we don't get to see them a lot uh, because of the time difference. But, uh, you know, what I've seen and what I remember I think it's a little bit more extended than, than it has been in previous years. And, um, you know, they rebound the ball so well. That's, you know, the thing that you know, not many people talk about. They're a plus five on the boards. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a big number, you know, considering their competition level. And that uh, to be a plus five is, is a big stat. Left side here, second row, Dana. And then we'll go to Gary. Uh, Dana, just DeAndre Hunter specifically, what kind of Challenges does he specifically play on this team because of his talents? Well, he's so versatile, Dana. He, I mean, he does so many things. Uh, he can go outside and shoot the three, he puts the ball on the floor, he posts up. Um, anytime you, you have a young man who, player that can score in those three areas and, um, you know, just doesn't get in a hurry, his tempo, his pace, uh, you know, he, he makes the right decision, you know nine times out of ten. So his ability to score from three different levels and, and his pace, uh, he's a tough matchup at 6-7, you know, and, and good athlete, uh, just a real difficult matchup. Staying over here on my left, Coach. Coach, uh, obviously you knew what you were getting with, I mean, uh, but what have you seen here with him lately that, that, that's really been a surprise to me? Where, where has he really been valuable to you? Well, Ehab's given us tremendous energy off the bench. Um, you know, we were really struggling against Cal Irvine, and, uh, you know, he came in and, and hit a big shot, but defensively really got us going again. Um, so his energy off the bench uh, defensively um, has, has been really good. He's been real active on the boards. Uh, but he's, he's really a, a good leader defensively, and. And he's been making some big shots for us. Uh, you know, he went four for four against Cal Irvine from three. And, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's done some things offensively in the conference tournament to really help us. But his biggest help has been on the defensive end and, and definitely on the boards. Next question here in the right side center aisle. Yes, uh, looks like you lost those three games in a row, second half of February. Then you went on and won 10 in a row. Can you? Kind of, for those of us who don't see all the time, what what happened there? Well, we were really bad in those three games. We had three road games uh, in a row, and uh, you know, it, was, it was definitely our uh, low point or one of the low points of the year. We just we played really poorly uh, at Oregon State, uh, at USC, uh, and then the second half of UCLA, we we broke down defensively terribly. So. Um, Three really poor performances, and um, but we came back home. The guys uh, got themselves right. Really did a good job getting together and getting each other prepared, and and we played really well against Arizona State and Arizona at home. Uh, Twenty-eight point win over Arizona State, and I think twenty-six over Arizona, and, and and really started playing 
much more connected offensively and defensively and, and just started playing a lot better. But those three road games, um, you know, we were, we were bad. We weren't a very good basketball team. And, and the guys really righted the ship there and, and really did a great job. Go so my left side here in the back row. Coach, usually a, a 12 seed gets this far and they're sort of viewed as a, as a Cinderella. You all obviously don't have a, a Cinderella pedigree in Oregon, but being the, the lone, like, low seed in this tournament, what's your perception of it? Do you, do you use that as a motivator or any sort of underdog role with this team? Well, I don't, I don't think at this point anybody needs any motivation. Uh, you know, the guys are excited about playing and, uh, uh, you know, for the total of the season, we weren't a good basketball team. You know, I mean, if you look at our last eight or nine, ten games, you know, uh, we've been a totally different team. But uh, before that, we were really inconsistent, you know, uh, within games, from game to game. Uh, our consistency was uh, was not very good, kind of what you'd expect, expect with four freshmen and, you know, a grad transfer and, and some injuries. You know, we were just up and down. but. Again, the last 10 games, you know, we've, we've been a lot different team. Uh, but to answer your question, I, you know, I think our guys are so excited about playing. I, you know, I told them right away when the pairings came out, numbers don't mean anything. You know, uh, Cal Irvine didn't think of himself as a 13 after winning 31 games. And, uh, you know, we, don't, we didn't think of ourselves as a 12, you know, going against Wisconsin. You know, uh, we, didn't, we didn't look at ourselves as a big underdog. You know, so, uh, you know, the Virginia is, is a team that, you know, is 31 and 3. You know, they, they've established themselves. Their consistency level is, is off the charts. So we're going to have to play really well. We know that. You know, there's uh, all areas of the game, and especially the boards, we're, we're going to have to play awfully, awfully well to give ourselves an opportunity. Time for one or two more right here on the left side on the edge. Um, following up on Amin, when you got him, Amin, what, what kind of role do, did you envision for him? And you know, just really what were your expectations um, and, and where you thought he would fit in? Well, he was a starter for us early in the year. And uh, uh, I'm not sure how many games exactly, but he, he started for us to start the season. And, uh, and then his role changed as the year went on. And, uh, you know, then he, he got excited about his role and really started doing a great job. But, uh, you know, when we brought him in, we knew he was a good defender. You know, we, we knew that uh, I think he led the nation in steals one year that, that he was at Corpus Christi. And, uh, you know, he had averaged double figures, so we knew he could score some baskets. Uh, but we liked his basketball savvy. You know, we liked how hard he played. And... Um, so we know we we knew he could add you know something to our ball team. Okay, last question right here, center aisle. Coach, uh, as a six nine forward who can also shoot the three, how has Lewis King kind of affected your offense this season, and and how have you seen him kind of step into a large role as a freshman? Did did he do that very very early? Did he come in late in the season after Bowl Bowl got hurt? When did he step in? Well, we got a slow start. Uh, he was recovering from knee surgery, so he didn't play, I'm, I'm not sure, nine or ten games to start the year. And then we had a minute restriction all the way through December. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think he got fully cleared till maybe the second week in January. Um, so, you know, he was a little bit rusty, you know, coming in after sitting out, you know, eight or nine months. Uh, uh, but he... You know, he picked it up, and, and he's playing really good now. He's shooting it better. Uh, his conditioning is a lot better now than it was, you know, in, in January and February. So I think that's helped him a bunch. Um, you know, he's got a good feel for how we're trying to use him offensively. Uh, so he's, he's playing really good. But uh, he did get off to a slow start, you know, obviously missing the first, you know, part of the season and then being on minute restriction for – you know, until mid-January, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, to really get into a flow until, you know, you're 100% and ready to go. Okay, good deal. Coach, thanks and All good right, luck. All right,
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the Oregon student athletes are on their way to the interview room. How you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good, good, thank you. All right, as the guys get settled here, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions from the floor. Anyone wants to get us started here? Gary? What, how much have you all had a chance to really study Virginia and really figure out you know just exactly how you beat that pack line defense Kenny oh Start. me oh um we've been studying them you know ever since we uh beat UC Irvine and we just been focusing on rebounding playing defense and really trying to run them off the line since they have some good three-point shooters and <clears throat> Really, our main focus is just trying to rebound the ball and get them up tempo. Okay. I need you. Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we enjoyed our win on Sunday, uh, no doubt. But then, uh, you know, this winter going home, we, we started focusing on Virginia on Monday. And, uh, you know, they want to share the ACC, and they won 30 games already uh, almost every year now. Uh, have really good shooters, Kai Guy, Jerome, uh, Alexander is a really, really good player. So offensively, they're really dangerous. Uh, then, of course, defensively, everybody knows one of the best defensive teams, if not in the country. So uh, we got our work cut out for us. Uh, we've been watching a little film since Monday, as Kenny said. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really going to come out to who opposes their will more and execute the game plan. Thank you. More questions for the Oregon student athletes. Okay, Gary. Uh, yeah, you have it. I mean, you you've gotten a lot of attention for, what, you know, what you've done here in the tournament, and your coach was saying that you've brought a lot of energy. Um, you know, how, I guess, how, how do you talk about your mindset in terms of switching roles from you know from being a starter to to coming off the bench and just being able to, to juice up things right away? Uh, I mean, that's, that's I think, what, hap what, uh, what happened for our, what started our winning streak, you know, three, four weeks ago uh, after the uh, UCLA trip at home, you know, everybody just decided to take the role, uh, whatever it is, you know, uh, whether it's shooting the ball, scoring the ball, rebounding, getting loose balls, uh, taking charges, bringing energy, getting deflections, uh, being a leader, being vocal, whatever your role is, just do it good. And, you know, Coach has been telling us lately, uh, just do your job and do it a little better, especially this late in the season. So, you know, I've just been thriving and uh, doing my job and bringing it on defense. And uh, uh, I think my teammates have been doing a good job trying to help me and, uh, you know, not, not tell me to stop, but keep going. So uh, I think that's why I've been a little more aggressive lately. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Right side in the back. Uh, Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times in Virginia. Uh, Kenny, you, you guys have four starters listed at six foot nine or above, or six foot nine, mm -hmm. including yourself. Yes. Uh, what are the benefits and drawbacks of that? I mean, how have you been able to use that exceptional size to your guys' advantage? Um, you know it. It closes a lot of passing lanes. It makes it really hard for teams to be able to find the open man, and it closes a lot of driving lanes. So they're not able to <clears throat> drive to the uh, basket as easy. And with me being in the inside, 
being able to block shots and affect uh, teams, being able to score, I feel like it really benefits the team as a whole, you know, being able to be that long and that lengthy and still be able to be able to guard like guards and things like that, being able to switch, being able to guard in the post, like have Lou guard our postmen, have Francis go out there and guard a guard. So I feel like it, it really works all in our favor. Dave Kane with the Virginia Sports Radio Network. Um, I'm curious for either of you guys, if you guys have been in a part of a swing this drastic where, you know, a month ago you guys are at UCLA feeling like you're not in the tournament. Now here we are on the verge of an Elite Eight. H have you guys experienced anything like that? And, and how different does this team feel now than it did a month ago? Kenny, then E, please. Gotcha. Um, no, I, I've never been a part of a, a, a drastic swing like this, you know, going from – you know, thinking that we're never going to be in a tournament, that I was never going to be able to play in a stage like this to make it into the Sweet 16, you know, it, it feels surreal. I'm still trying to take it in one day at a time. And ultimately, you know, I'm just trying to continue to play. But to answer your question, no, I've never been a part of a, a such a drastic change like this. It happened so quick, you know, after losing to UCLA, USC, and still being the only team in the pack that's playing. So, no, I haven't. Yeah, me personally, never, uh, not even close to this. But, yeah. uh, I mean, we was 6-8 and eight in the Pac-12. And, it's, uh, you know, we, we didn't see uh, the end of the tunnel at that point. But, you know, we just stick with it. And we know that once we got our team together and our defense together, we can be really dangerous in March. And coach would always tell us it's never too late. It's not too late. And it's been an up and down season for us all year, you know. Uh, had Bull, got hurt <clears throat> seven, eight games into the year with a season ending injury. He didn't even start with us the year. Uh, you know, Paul sprained his ankle, was almost out for two weeks. Kenny broke his jaw. Uh, Peyton was hurt for a little bit, banged up. Uh, so it's been an up and down year for all of us. And we finally started getting together, you know, end of January, early February, and everybody got healthy. And then, uh, you know, we started getting even better in practice and showed in games. And we lost a lot of close games early in the year. Uh, our record didn't show how good we are. And we was young. And I think that's we learned from all these losses early in the year. And they're paying off now. And uh, so, yeah, I think we knew that not this special or something, this special is going to happen. But we knew can, we can be really good. Okay, we're staying over here on my left. Kenny, you mentioned how surreal this whole run has, has felt. Was there a moment at any point in the run where you took a step back and were like, oh, wow, we could actually you know, make some noise here and do something? Um, yeah, it, when I realized that we had the capabilities to be able to compete with the top teams like in the country was after we beat Washington at home for their senior night. I never wanted to win a game so bad in my life. Like, I wanted to beat them bad because, you know, they beat us on our floor earlier in the year. And, you know, it was a lot of things that people were saying about us. You know, we weren't going to be able to win. We were going to lose as soon as we got into the Pac-12 tournament. And we ended up winning the Pac-12 tournament. So all of that just ended up falling in line. And then, you know, that's really when I thought that we were able to do anything if we really just got together and now we're here. Anything else for the Oregon student athletes? All right, we'll let these guys go. Thanks and good luck guys. Thank you.